Five Things I Learned the Hard Way. Now on Fixing the Money Thing. Isaiah 61, speaking of your heritage, you're right. Jesus said this scripture was fulfilled when he came into the earth realm. Instead of your shame, you'll receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you'll rejoice in your inheritance. And so you'll inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. That's more than enough, friend, a double portion. You know, I've know I know what it's like to have shame and you can't pay your bills. You get those little envelopes in the mail that are real thin from the bank, and you know it's not statement time. <laughs> or you're out to eat and your visa's declined and you gotta pay for a whole party you said you'd pay for. I understand what it's like to have shame and have a party at my house and the electric guy knock on the door and want to cut the power off in the middle of the party. I know what that's like. But the church wants to shame you for the blessing of God. Don't let them do that. If you have the chance, you've got to go to Banff, Alberta and Lake Louise and Jasper, British Columbia, some of the most beautiful country in the world. But here, think about this. I'm spending, uh, the Cabot Trail is ranked as the number one motorcycle trail in Canada. Then we fly across the continent and ride in the number two ranked motorcycle trail in Canada, the Rockies. And yes, I am bragging. Because what I want you to understand is where I come from, here I am thinking, I am riding in the most beautiful spots in the world on a Harley, and I'm flying our, our plane, our plane, not the ministry's plane, our company, my company bought it, thank you very much. <laughs> flying it across the continent, clear across the continent to ride in Calgary. Friend, that's like you read in travel magazine or Outdoor Alive. I mean, you understand, I'm, I mean, I'm having fun. And religion tries to steal the life out of you. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that, Pastor Gary. What should I be doing? Paying your bills or what? What do you want me to do? I don't know. I shouldn't have said that. Never mind. But you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I have an example. I mean, I'm having a good time. and God's good. And I want you to understand that he's good. One of the hardest things I had to learn the hard way was I can't take false responsibility for everyone's life. I can teach, I can mentor, I can demonstrate, I can show you, but I can't do it for you. And that took a long time for me to figure that out because I want you to have it so bad that I kept wanting to do it for people, you know? I, I just want you to have it, you know? It's like, I want to alleviate the pressure, I want to help you, you know? And, but it's interesting, as you begin to do that, people want more and more. They, they kind of learn that's the way it is, and they, they have to grow into that. So that's today's lesson, is that's one of the hardest things I learned. Our text is Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 4. It says, sluggards, another name for lazy, or I would say people that refuse to take personal responsibility, do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. They find how much? Nothing. They do not sow. Now, why would they look when they know they didn't sow? That is a question you need to ask, <laughs> right? Why are they looking for something when they didn't sow? That's a good question. Now, but pastor, I mean, so-and-so needs our help. I mean, uh, we need to help them. I agree we want to help them, but we have a right to ask, why is nothing there? Do you understand there's always details under the surface? There's always reasons why? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying people need mentored. Hey, do you not know how to sow? Let me help you learn how to sow. Let me learn, I'll teach you the seasons. Maybe you don't know how to sow, when to sow. Let me show you how to harvest. But the point is there's always a reason why they are where they're at. But the church is really good at like, let me just help you without really digging past that. And if we're going to really truly help people, we have to help them, them identify the issue so they can move past it. A Band-Aid is not what they need. And here's the problem. If you are their answer, they haven't sown in season, you have, guess what? You're now their source. And when you become their source, what are they learning? You know what the best answer for someone that 
is finding themselves in a situation where they have not taken the time or the responsibility is to let them get hungry. That is not a very popular thing to say. Let them get hungry. And I didn't say that. The Bible does. In Proverbs chapter 16, it says, The appetite of the laborers work for them. Their hunger drives them on. Let them get hungry. How many have raised chickens? How many have hatched chickens? You've actually incubated the chicken eggs and you've hatched them. It takes 24 to 48 hours for a baby chick to break out of its shell. Now, if you've done that, you know that while they're breaking out during that time period, they peep. You know, you heard baby chicks peep, peep, peep. You know, they peep. <laughs> they peep when they're not out of the shell yet. You can hear them peeping and there's a crack, right? If you've done that. And so if you don't know the process, here's what you're tempted to think. You're probably going to interpret the peep as, help me, help me, I'm trapped, help me, I can't get out. <laughs> but really what they're saying is, oh, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting stronger. <laughs> because the process of breaking out of the shell is the process of them getting stronger. <laughs> right? Sometimes you, gotta, you can't do it for them. You shut down the process that allows their hunger to drive them to change, to drive them to discipline. Listen, if little Ralph is still living in your basement, he's 45, why is he going to ever leave? You feed him every day. <laughs> he's got it made. <laughs> when I became a regional vice president back in Tulsa, I had a team of people that worked for me, five full-time managers. And so we were, you know, we'd make sales calls and they would fail to fill their week up with appointments. And because I thought, okay, they're, they're young at this. And if I could just let them taste how good the business is, how easy it is to make money, then surely they would, you know, jump in there. So I made their calls. I filled their week up. I would sit in the office from 9 o'clock on Saturday to 9 o'clock at night. I would set my week up, and I would set all of their week up with their open holes. I would fill their gaps. They had a full week. They liked that. They really did. And they weren't there on Saturday all day. But I thought if I could just, you know, that's what we thought. If we could just get them to sample this. And they were making the best money they ever made in their life when I set in their appointments. Guess what happened when I stopped doing that? They all quit. See, I robbed them of the pressure that would cause them to make the calls. You see, I learned the hard way. Cold calling, I had bills to pay. I'd make 90 cold calls a day. Every day I'd make 90, I'd open the Westerville phone book, I moved to Ohio, I made 90 cold calls a day. There was no one saying, shh, 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 shh make them calls. Didn't mean to spit on you there. You know? No, I didn't have it. No one had to tell me. I had pressure on me to do that. You see, the pressure, the hunger. I had a family waiting on me. I had, you know, that forced me. So I was very good at making calls. These guys, let me help you. I make calls. It's not a problem. I do calls all the time. Let's do calls. So I had done that in Tulsa. Then, you know, I learned how to make calls. But that wasn't their total answer. Now, how to make a call, that would be part of their answer. Who to call, that would be part of the answer. But making the call is not their answer, right? right? I really had a revelation one day when one of my managers who I'd set his week up, his wife calls and said, my husband is in a bar getting drunk. Would you go to the bar and get him out? That was the day that I realized I care more about his family than he does. It was a revelation to me. I said, wait, wait. I said, wait a minute. What am I doing? I care more about his family than he does, right? If he cared, he'd be on the appointments, he'd be, you know. But here I am concerned about him setting his week up, and he doesn't have the respect to even cover the appointment. That was a big eye-opener for me. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.